Hey guys, welcome back to Physics in the Flesh, two blocks in a horizontal circle. Two blocks of masses M1 and M2 are connected to each other and to a central post by cords as shown below. They rotate about the post at a frequency f, revolutions per second, on a frictionless horizontal surface at distances r1 and r2 from the post. Derive an algebraic expression for the tension in each segment of the cord. Okay, so here's our cord. Here are two masses, M1 and M2. Okay, we need to find the tension here and the tension right there. Both of these masses are going in horizontal circles. M1 is a distance R1 from the center. M2 is a distance R2 from the center. Okay, so first things first, I know you're not given numbers, so it might be a little bit freaky to look at at first, but we're gonna go ahead and draw free body diagrams. Okay, so I'm gonna let, I'm gonna do one in blue and I'm gonna do two in green. So color coordination helps you keep things consistent. So let's do free body diagram for box one first. Okay, so it's on a surface, so we've got a normal force. So we'll call that Fn1. Okay, there's a weight, so there's a force of gravity, Fg1. Now looking at one, you've got a force of tension to the left and you've got a force of tension to the right. The one going to the left towards the center of the, uh, the circular motion, we'll call that Ft1. Okay, and the one going to the right, we're gonna call that Ft2. You wanna make sure you don't call them the same name because they're two different strings, they're gonna have two different tensions. Okay, so next, block two, same thing, it's got a normal force, Fn2. Now, the question does not say, nor should you assume that they're the same mass. Okay, so Fn2, Fg2, they're different from Fn1, Fg1. And for two, you've got that one tension going inwards and that's the same as this guy right here. Okay, Ft2. Same magnitude, opposite direction, Newton's third law. Okay, so we got a little bit of stuff happening here. Now let's, uh, let's see if we can simplify this problem a bit using some theory. Okay, these masses are going around in a horizontal circle, right? So they're not going up or down. So we can say with confidence that in the vertical direction, the acceleration is zero. So we can say a y is equal to zero. Now, if acceleration in the y direction is zero, that means the net force in the y direction is also zero. And based on that, we can make two more conclusions. If the net force in the y direction is zero, therefore Fn1 equals Fg1, and therefore Fn2 equals Fg2. Okay, so I'm gonna write that in. There are magnitudes, of course, not the entire vector. Okay, so there we go. That's in the vertical direction. Now, in the horizontal direction, we can make a similar statement, except in the horizontal direction, of course, there is acceleration. It is moving in a circle. So we can say that the X acceleration is due to the centripetal force. So it's centripetal acceleration. And if that's the case, then that means that the net force in the X direction is equal to the centripetal force, which is MV squared over R. Okay, so there's that. Now we got a few things happening here. We did, we have some simplifications that we can do. The next step I wanna do is actually look at the speed and look at how we can express it more conveniently. Okay, so in this question, we're told that um, the blocks are rotating about the center at a frequency F. Now, later on, as you take physics more, you'll learn that if you have a speed going in a circle, we call that angular velocity, okay? But because you may or may not have been introduced to that concept yet, I'm just gonna call it speed for now. Okay, so we'll just call it V, even though it is a, uh, you know, a rotating speed. Okay, so for now, V, the speed is uh, happening at a certain frequency, a certain number of revolutions per second. Now, how much is one revolution? Well, a revolution is one circle, and the distance as you travel in a circle is the, cir the circumference, two pi R. Okay, so therefore, uh, two pi R, is one revolution. So by doing that, I can cancel all my revolutions and I can get the response in, well, distance per second. Okay, so if I do that, I get V equals two pi R F. Okay, now I'm gonna start working based on my free body diagram. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this back on the screen. Okay, so you have your two free body diagrams. I'm gonna do my uh, net force equations in the horizontal direction. In other words, I'm gonna solve for centripetal force. 
Okay, so for the first object, let's let positive be outwards, okay? So if positive is outwards, and I do the net force for the first object, it's going to be FT2 minus FT1 equals F centripetal. Okay, so here we go. So the centripetal force for the first block, FC1, is equal to FT2 minus FT1. And we know centripetal force is mass times velocity squared over radius. So make sure you have your um, make sure you have your subscripts. This is the centripetal force on one, therefore it's mass of one, velocity of one squared divided by radius of one. Now we can do a simplification here. Okay, so we know that v1, we just said v is two pi r f. So for v1, it's two pi r one f. Okay, now, because they're both attached to the same string, it's going to take each of them the same amount of time to go around. Okay, so although the radii are different, the speeds, well, the speed is going to be obviously faster for the outer one, but they both go through the same angular, uh, well, the same angle. Okay, so their angular velocity has to be um, consistent with the distances from the center. So here we go. So V1 equals 2 pi R1F. So therefore, v1 squared is 4 pi squared, r1 squared, f squared. And the reason I did that is because I got to plug that in over here for v1 squared. Okay, so here we go. Uh, ft2 minus ft1 equals, okay, so how do I write this to make it most efficient? Okay, let's, let's just bring the 4 pi squared out in front. 4 pi squared, r1 squared, uh, f v1 squared over r1. Okay, so I've got r1 squared in the top, I've got r1 in the bottom, so this cancels out with one of those. Okay, leaving you with ft2 minus ft1 equals 4 pi squared r1 f v1 squared. Okay, so there's an expression I have. I'm going to call that expression number one. Okay, so you'll see where we're going to go with this in just a sec. Um, I feel like I just dropped the mass by accident. Okay, so let me just add that. Not sure why I did that, but there we go. Okay, so I'm going to add the mass here. This whiteout is fantastic stuff. Okay. So here we go. Let's just double check. We got 4 pi squared R1 F squared M1. Okay. So I'm going to put that M1 here. I took out the V1 because I actually substituted it already. So bringing that down here, I've got my M1. Okay, so now I've got the correct expression. We'll call that number one. Okay, so that's for free body diagram number one. For the second object, we've only got one force in the center pointing direction. We've got FT2. Okay, so we're going to solve for centripetal force in that direction. So let's do FC2 equals, now in this case, the FT2 is going in the negative direction, so we'll set it equal to minus FT2 equals M2 V2 squared over R2. Okay, and similarly, uh, you just plug in your speed. So because V1 was 2 pi R1F, V2 is going to be 2 pi R2F, and V2 squared is going to be 4 pi squared R2 squared F. And we're going to plug that in. So it's going to come out to look almost exactly like this. Okay, so we're going to end up with minus FT2 equals 4 pi squared R2 F squared M2. Okay. Now, I have a minus FT here, so I'm just going to take that minus, bring it over to the right, or if looking at it another way, I'm going to multiply both sides by minus 1. FT2 is negative 4 pi squared R2 F squared M2. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what, that's half my answer because I'm asked to find the tension in the cords. I found one of the tensions already. There's the first one. Okay, so I'll call that expression number two. Now, in order to find FT1, check out what we have here in expression number one. I've got FT1, and I know FT2, so I just plug that in right there, and I simplify, and I've got the expression for FT1 as well. Okay, so that's what's going to happen next. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug 1 into 2 and see what I get there. So let's rewrite uh, equation number 1 here. FT2 minus FT1 equals 4 pi squared R1 F squared M1. 
Okay, now plugging 1 into 2, I'm plugging in for FT2. Uh, now I get 4 pi squared, R2 F squared M2, minus FT1 equals 4 pi squared R1 F squared M1. Okay, it looks kind of crazy, but you know what? It's actually not too bad. You just want to simplify it. Get FT1 by itself. So because it's negative on the left, bring it to the right, make it positive. Similarly, take that positive 4 pi squared, etc. Bring it to the left, it's going to become negative. So you end up with negative 4 pi squared R2 F squared M2 minus 4 pi squared R1 F squared M1 equals FT1. Okay, so next you want to factor out what you have common to both expressions. And let's see, I've got a minus 4 pi squared and I've got an F squared common to both. So that's coming out. And I'm going to just take that FT1 and bring it to the left because it looks neater like that. And the other stuff goes to the right. Signs stay the same. So factor out your minus 4 pi squared um, F squared. And when you do that, you're going to be left with M2 R2 plus M1 R1. And there is your final expression for the tension in the first chord. Okay, guys, so that's it for this video. Um, if you're wondering why the signs came out to be negative for both, that just has to do with the direction I chose to be positive. So if you go back to the beginning, uh, the first page, our first, um, well, the direction I decided to choose as positive was outward. So had I chosen inward, these values would have both come out to be positive. But make sure you can just interpret that. It really doesn't mean anything to say that tension is negative. I mean, either there's a force or there isn't, and there's a certain amount. Okay, guys, so I'm going to end the video there. Be sure to click that like button and subscribe to Physics in the Flush so you never miss a video from me. Talk to you guys later.